Hey, hi, welcome to the series of A Spy Sessions. So, I am Dr. Krishna Hema, your A Spice expert. Let us get into the topic. Today, we are going to discuss about MAN3 process area, that is, process management. So, what is the purpose of process management process area? Is, is to define, establish, and control the activities and resources necessary for a project to produce a product in the context of the project's requirements and constraints. So if you see this statement, so you are, you can guess it out like, you know, uh, first thing is identify. So identify the tasks which are involved in the uh, project management and we need to establish them and we need to control them. So these three phrases are very important to this uh, process area. Process outcomes are the scope of the work uh, for the project is defined. So generally the scope will be part of your project management plan. So which is in turn uh, extracted from your SOW or the contract document or the understanding which you have got through like uh, from the customer the feasibility of achieving the goals of the project and with, with available resources and the constraints is evaluated. Uh, the activities and resources necessary to complete the work are sized and estimated. Uh, so interfaces within the project and with other projects and organizational units are identified and monitored. Plans for the execution of the project are developed, implemented, and maintained. Progress of the project is monitored and reported, and corrective action is taken when project goals are not achieved and recurrence uh, of problems identified in the project is prevented. So if you look into these things, like you can get to know, so what are the things we need to concentrate as a part of the project management? So if you see this, uh, these things like uh, we need to uh, identify the tasks, we need to identify the resources which are suitable to this, to your project, and we need to track them, and we need to estimate the work, and we need to monitor the work, like what is the progress of uh, uh, the project, and uh, uh, before starting of any uh, any project like we need to look into the your organizational repository like uh, whether a similar project is executed uh, in your previous history or you know previous uh, is is there any similar project in, the, in your previous uh, projects or uh, like the same client is dealt uh, before like what were the previous lessons so we need to consider that before ahead before a starting before starting of the project and uh, we need to uh, we need to ensure on the project goals what we whatever we have defined in the initial phase of the project so we need to track them and we need to find out a corrective action uh, if there is any deviation so what about the base practices? So the base practice one talks about define the scope of the work, identify the project goals, motivation, and boundaries. These are, see everything you need to define, this process area you need to define as a part of your PMP or the project management plan or the project specification document. Uh, so the scope will be defined uh, as a part of it. BP2, BP2 talks about the project life cycle. So your project my life cycle may be waterfall model, maybe uh, V model, uh, maybe uh, agile. So these all things you need to define like in what way you're gonna execute your project uh, going forward. So define the life cycle of the for the product uh, for the project which is appropriate to the scope, context, and magnitude and complexity of the project. So here I want to give one hint. So if you know everything about your project, so if you know the scope of the project completely, like what you are going to do it in the, in the entire life cycle, that's when you can follow the traditional what traditional waterfall model or the V model, you can take it up. But we're in, uh, so if you don't know, like, you know, what work will come in the next, uh, next cycle, or something like uh, so then you have to you're you're quite ambiguous about the work scope then you have to follow uh, agile model so it would be more feasible 
So MA in three, uh, BP three or the base practice three talks about evaluate feasibility of the project, evaluate the feasibility of achieving the goals of the project in terms of technical feasibility within constraints with respect to time, project estimates and available resources. So this all we need to consider and we need to find the feasibility and the constraints also. We need to identify each of them and we need to document them also. Okay, BP4 talks about define, monitor and adjust project activities. So define, monitor and adjust project activities and their uh, dependencies according to the, according to defined uh, pros, project life cycle and estimations. Uh, so adjust activities and their dependencies as required. So we need to identify all the dependencies. Uh, we need to identify all the project management related issues uh, and document them in the issue log and even the dependencies you can document with them so based on all these constraints so we need to uh, we need to revise our estimation or we need to uh, adjust our project management activities uh, and in monitoring them say for example uh, if your uh, resources are reluctant okay reluctant to enter the data and uh, and this is how like it was it is tough situation for you to hand handle the project so then the frequency of review so the frequency of status uh, you need to uh, you need to move it more frequent so weekly uh, before it it might be you know weekly ones or the fortnightly ones now you can even ask your resources to enter or you know to to give the enough to give enough data or enter enough data uh, by meeting them uh, on daily basis also so this is one of the example i just want to give so your uh, this entire project activities like uh, including the your engineering activities management activities support man support activities support activities is your hr uh, the resource management activity or your uh, quality assurance activity this all we need to monitor as part of your uh, project management plan itself uh, so BP5 BP talks about to define, monitor and adjust project estimates and resources, define, monitor and adjust project estimates and estimates of effort and resources based on the project goals, project risk, motivations and boundaries. So uh, this entire project management process area is like, you know, adjusting. See, you will have a hard deadline with the, from your client. So that's when like initially you feel like everything is smooth and all. So in between one resource uh, uh, is moved out of the project or you know he went on he went into the leave. So that's when like how will you adjust your uh, um, your pr entire project plan is like in between you will change right change accordingly to the availability of the resources. In the same way like if you identify some hardware dependency is there and you do not get the hardware on time so that's when like you feel like you that's when you feel like you know revising it revising uh, your plan with respect to the availability of the hardware so uh, your how will you meet the deadline is you will adjust all these combinations uh, so your resource combination or you know your technical dependencies or uh, the hardware dependencies so this is all you will you will adjust in order to meet the quality of the project or the goals of the project and uh, even uh, you know uh, even to meet the deadline of the project also uh, so you what you need to think on is like uh, the project goals project risks uh, boundaries and motivations everything you have to you have to think in your mind and you need to uh, plan accordingly revise the plan accordingly your bp6 talks about ensure required skills knowledge and experience identify the required skills knowledge and experience of the project in line to, with the estimation estimates and make sure the selected individuals and team either have or acquire these in time so if you talk about these things it is nothing but competency matrix or the skill matrix so you need to form a team in in a way like you know um, all the team all the team will have the enough this enough knowledge or the uh, enough technical knowledge or the skills with respect to the project if someone is lack of knowledge or lack of skill then we need to provide training to bring uh, that particular resource into capable capable uh, 
two capable resource. So your BP7 talks about identify, monitor, and adjust project interfaces and agreed commitments. Identify the identify and agree interfaces of the project and other pro sub projects, organizational units, and other affected stakeholders, and monitor agreed commitments. So this is nothing but uh, we have discussed in PP5 also. We need to identify, monitor, and adjust project interfaces. So we have to identify the interfaces and uh, the agreed commitments to the client, and we need to uh, work around. We need to adjust our plans to meet their requirements and the commitments. Your BP8 talks about define, monitor, and adjust project schedule. Allocate resources to achieve and schedule each activity of the whole project. The project schedule has to be kept continuously updated during lifetime of the project. So this is like you know in n number of times you will revise your plan that is okay but you need to uh, you need to you know allocate the resources you need to monitor the schedule of the project you need to uh, uh, you know revise the plan uh, throughout the life cycle in order to adjust all your activities all your engineering management and support uh, support processes in line with the uh, with the client expectations so or uh, your own product expectations your bp9 talks about ensure consistency ensure that estimates skills activities schedule plans interfaces and commitments of the projects are consistent across affected parties so if you look at the list so you need to take care of the estimation part you need to take care of the skills or the resource skills uh, activities so or the tasks so schedules or uh, like your uh, planned uh, start date planned uh, end date is actual end date actual start date or the revised dates and the plans so it will it will also have uh, the schedules in and in, uh, in interfaces if there is any dependencies in in uh, the interfaces we need to consider and uh, we need to ensure on the commitments for the project either on deadline or uh, the acceptance criteria which is given by the client and uh, uh, it we need to ensure the consistencies so you need to ensure all these things are met and uh, you need to adjust a plan based on it so bp10 talks about review and report progress of the project regularly review and report the status of the project and the fulfillment of activities against estimated efforts and duration of all all affected parties prevent recurrence of the problems identified so you will have an issue tracker so issue tracker related to the product management activities so whenever you find you find an issue in the management so you need to log that as an issue if you find any dependency then you need to enter into the dependency log or if you think like if you identify much more ahead like if it is a potential uh, problem which may occur may not occur then it, you should enter that particular thing in your risk register so all these things if you do and if you monitor these things then you are able to prevent the reoccurrence of the problems which uh, prevent the reoccurrence of the problem so and in the beginning of the uh, this process area discussion we have discussed about the best practices and the lessons learned so we need to capture that and when you are uh, you know when the cycle or the milestone or see it, it depends on your on your uh, project management uh, thing or your client requirement so some people will conduct a lessons learned at at the end of the project or you know some people uh, will conduct lessons learned at different phases of the project they'll consider a, a milestone or the gate so that's when like you know they'll conduct a my lessons learned so they will they want to uh, see at the end if you capture then it will be useful for the for your next project right if you do it in the middle of the project then you will be able to recover in the next phases of the project so there are two different things like uh, it's it's your own uh, organizational uh, thing organizational decision like how you are going to conduct your best practice session and the lessons learned session so uh, your output work products are project plan or the project specification document or the MPP or uh, um, these things so communication record uh, is uh, email or you know e any configuration management tool related auto generated uh, things and your change request uh, so if there is any changes in the project scope uh, so request uh, sorry review record uh, 
corrective action register your project schedule work breakdown structure or wbs uh, and your stakeholder group list or uh, you will have a skill resource resource uh, log or resource list uh, so with the competency matrix and uh, project status reports so project status reports you will give it to the top management and the client also uh, as agreed in the beginning of the project so i i think i have completed this topic if you have any doubts you can write to me um, uh, i am uh, tota krishna hema so you can write to me in uh, an email or you can even ping me in linkedin thank you thank you for your time